Is this it? There we go. All right, there we go. There we go. All right. Sorry, I needed to cue up the. Uh, I needed the noir music. Uh, it was 3 a.m. on a Saturday night. I was humping the gay internet drama beat again, working late on a missing persons case. I was trying to find the whereabouts of Mr. Andy Worski, a stuttering streamer who disappeared in London after getting knocked out in an internet boxing match with an ooga booga looking Filipino who goes by the name of Salt Poppy. The poor Canadian kid went missing after he took a dive in 30 seconds, like Little Mac's retarded brother getting his clock cleaned by a pint-sized piston Honda. Andy had been gone for almost a month, and his parents wanted me to track him down. If only so his dad could find some closure and see if he could get his computer room back. <laughs> After a long night of chasing fruitless leads, I found myself back in the office, distracting myself between listening to Nicky Rackett's shyster lawyer stream, <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny, and watching a hot dame on Twitch scribble sweet nothings on our sweet games for our simp donos. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta pour a drink for this. I gotta get in character. <laughs> Hang on. I gotta pour out a little something for the... I can't drink all my hurricane booze for it. <clears throat> Continues here. Uh, the sad sight of a beautiful girl writing boys' names on her forehead with a sharpie made me ponder why hordes of young men would rather pull all their tapsies to internet hot tub whores. Instead of just asking that girl next door, Hey, toots, let's go for a ride in my dad's Lincoln and cut a rug down at the soda shop. <laughs> this is so long, but it's great. Uh, While I was wrapped up in my late night pondering, Nicky had sword and scale on his show, and he read a donation for his true crime purveying guest that caught my attention. The donator wanted to know why our pussy old pal porcelain had beef with sword and scale, which caught my attention. Apparently that bitchy, bitter Brit banned our mag man <laughs> magnanimous friend from his chat after he'd sent a large donation that riled up the audience. Lo and behold, Porcelain's chat didn't like Mr. Scale for being intimate buddies with Mersh, that wonky-eyed, cantankerous mick who'd been an old client of mine, since I helped him out on a cyber-stalking investigation involving a hyper-obsessed trust fund kid who's got a chip on his shoulder because he wants to wear Sam Hyde's skin and Mike David's colostomy bag. <laughs> Holy shit, man, hang on. <laughs> the chorus of complaints from the pre-cum chasers in the chat about sword and scale cis comrades quickly prompted the boot from Porcelain. And, well, well, well. Judging from Mr. Scale's frustrated response to that limey's lack of gratitude, Looks like Mr. Sheely and I have another incident on file in the Jesse P.S. case. Because it seems that the Confederacy of Faggots have their internet fingerprints all over this mess. So I made sure to grab a timestamp for my client. Because Mersh hates it when people waste his time with gay internet drama. And expect him to wade through eight-hour streams just to see a trivial one-minute discussion about some retarded bullshit that happened months ago. It may be old news to Mersh. He'd probably yell at me to get a life and stop interrupting him from hunting scarves in Tarkov. It's WWE 2K now, but, but I figured it was worth sending anyhow, if only to help him phoning another show, where he ran out of Cartnox clips and freeze-dried taco-making stroke victims to ridicule. Fortunately, it wasn't a completely wasted night. After the racket stream, I was finally able to close the Worski case when I saw a notification for the return of the Kino Casino show on Sunday. I was grateful to learn he'd been back to his old antics again with Ashton, that hearty, hyperventilating Canadian who goes by the name of PPP around these parts. But it was a bittersweet gratitude, as I longed for the good old days when a thick boy like Ashton would have been given a less faggy Christian name and raised up for a more pure godly life. A life where he could throw on his suspenders every morning, <laughs> eat a plate full of flapjacks and bacon before heading outside with a mighty axe and trusty blue ox at his side, felling trees all day and making an honest living, doing work that doesn't involve spreading his butt cheeks on stream.me and hollering about fools getting felted, while a drunk dyslexic pork chop who's back home safely in his dad's computer room again. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, look, 
I can't. I'm not doing your link. I'm not doing your link, too. Come on, man. You're asking a lot here.